Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Action RPG Lessons. In lesson number 10, we'll gain a new piece of equipment from that treasure chest, the bow. We'll set it up so that we can attack enemies from afar using arrows. First, we need to create an arrow class. So click the plus sign and name this one arrow. Next, we'll need to find the sprite for it. In the asset store, look for the arrow sprite. I'm going to name it arrow. Inside the arrow class, let's set the sprite for it and the scale. So it's going to use that arrow sprite and it's going to have a scale X of 2 and a scale Y of 2. So now that our arrow is mostly set up, let's actually give the player the ability to shoot the arrows. We'll need to do that inside the player class. First, we need to create two variables. The first one is to check if the player has the bow in the first place. So we'll say self.hasBow equals false. Just like how they don't start the game with the sword either. Next, we're going to keep track of how many arrows the player has. This is going to be an integer called ammo. And at the beginning of the game, we're going to have zero. So right now in our game, if we collect the star and spawn the chest, we can't do anything with it. What we're going to do is see if the player is colliding with the chest and then see if they press the E button to open it. And when they do so, they're going to get the bow and 15 ammo. I'm going to do this collision check inside the chest. In the loop is where we'll do that collision check. We'll say if get collision between self and player. And we need to get the information about the player in order to change its variables around. So I'm just going to name this one player and it's going to equal that collision check again. Now we only wanted to interact with the chest if we press a button. I was going to use the E key. So I'm going to say if key was pressed, E. And since we have access to all the player's variables by using this line, we can say player dot has bow equals true and player dot ammo equals 15. And the last thing we want to do is delete that chest. It's only going to work once. So we say destroy self. So with this logic, we're going to give the player those variables, but the variables don't actually do anything yet. So even if the player has the bow, well, we can't shoot it because we haven't coded that logic. We have to do so inside the player loop. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom area here. And right after the code for the sword is where I'm going to place the code for the bow. Just to keep things that are similar grouped together. So I'm going to say if self dot has bow is equal to true, well, I'll be able to shoot an arrow, but I want to check another condition. I want to check if I have enough ammo to shoot an arrow. Now previously we've done this with just two if statements, but I'll show you another trick to add two conditions into one if statement, which saves us some space. In order to put a second condition in an if statement, we join them together with the word and. You can see it turns purple. 
and we just put our second condition in here. We want to see if our ammo is above zero. And this if statement will only work if both these conditions are true. Now, we do need to add another if statement here because we need to check if the key was pressed. Alternatively, I could add another and into that if statement above, but I'm running out of space, so I'm going to put it on the next line. I'm going to check if key was pressed. Now, in order for key was pressed to check for the space bar, we just put one space in between those apostrophes. It looks like an empty space to us, but that's the computer checking for the space bar. And if so, this is where we'll create an arrow, just like we did for our sword slash. Now I'm going to name this arrow arrow, and that is allowed. You don't have to name your object the same as the class, and you don't have to name it something different. A lot of programmers actually name it the same because it's easier to keep track of. If I name my player player, then I know what the name of the player is instead of using like Bob or Joe or Hero. But since this is your code, the answer is up to you. So I've created an arrow and I want to place it where the player is, just like we did for the sword slash. So we just match up their positions and let's test it out. First, I need to solve my puzzle super quick. And when I collect the treasure, it disappeared, so that code is working. And if I press the space bar, I create an arrow. Now you see that they aren't actually flying anywhere. That's the next step. So just like the sword slash, we need to give the arrow a direction but we also need to give it a speed. So in the arrow start, we're going to give it those two variables. We're going to say self.direction is equal to down and self.speed equals three. Inside the loop, we want to add the code to make the arrow move. And that code is going to be the exact same as our evil tree. This code is checking the direction and then moving the object by the speed. That's exactly what we want to do with the arrow. If we press Control C after highlighting it, we're going to copy it and Control V, paste it into the arrow loop. So now we're checking the direction and increasing the speed. But I'm also going to add a line to each one here to change the angle. So if the direction is equal to up, I'm going to modify the angle to be 90. And I'm going to do the same thing for each other angle. Down will be negative 90. The angle for right is just going to be zero. Technically, you don't need this line, but I'm trying to be consistent. And then left will be an angle of 180. Now. Inside the player loop, we want to actually modify that direction when we create the arrow. So let's scroll back down to our code here. For the sword slash, we checked each direction and then modified the angle and the position to match. For the arrow, since it's already taking care of the logic needed for the direction, such as changing the angle and moving by the speed, all we need to do is tell the arrow the direction it needs to go in. And we can do that by matching up the direction variables of the arrow and the player. So if the player is facing right, the arrow will also face right. So the arrow's direction can be equal to the player's direction. And the arrow will take care of the rest. Let's try it out. I'll solve the puzzle super quick. I will collect my bow and I will shoot an arrow to the left and to the right and down and up. And just like that, we've got arrows. 
Now if I shoot tons of arrows, well, there's something wrong going on there. Because I should only be able to shoot 15, right? And the reason is that we're not actually reducing the ammo when we shoot the bow. So we need to add one more line down here to say self.ammo minus equals 1. And you'll see that if you try that again, once you've shot 15 arrows, it's out. You're done. you got to find more somehow. I'm going to scroll back up a little bit to the sword slash. And in order to get rid of some of this white space, I'm going to combine these two if statements into one by using the and keyword. So here, I want to get rid of the colon and this other if. We only want one if per line. And instead, we just combine these two conditions with the keyword and. So now I'm checking if has sword is true and if key was pressed F. Now I've got all this white space. This will actually work as it is because everything is still lined up properly. However, it's taking up space that it doesn't have to. Now the simplest way to get rid of the white space is to click on each line and press backspace. But that takes a lot of time. I'll show you a shortcut. If you highlight all the lines that you want to move and you press shift tab, it moves them all back by one tab. You can do the opposite by pressing tab to move them back out and back and forth. Now, these are all lined up properly. They're one space out because they're part of this if statement. And these lines inside these if statements are all once more. And our code looks a lot better for it. Next up, you're going to have a practice lesson. For this practice lesson, I want you to set up the collision between the arrow and the bat. For example, if it collides with the bat, we want to first check for collision with the arrow. And we want to reduce the health by one. For the arrows specifically, we can ignore the invincibility. So they'll always do damage. When an arrow hits an enemy, we want to destroy it. Finally, I want you to add another loot option. Sometimes the enemy will drop arrow packs, so you'll need to add another loot number. And if that number is greater than 80, spawn an arrow pack. Now what is an arrow pack, you ask? Well, you'll need to create a class for it called arrow pack. And in the sprites, there's one right there. When the player collides with the arrow pack, give the player five arrows and destroy the pack. Think you can handle that? Give it a shot before moving on to the next lesson. I'll see you there.